Hi guys, we continue with the series of lectures in 5 minutes and today we will talk about page object model. So let's get started. Page object model is a design pattern mainly used in automated testing. By the way, whenever I will refer to the word POM, I mean page object model. It's just a shortened version. Its main philosophy is to represent each web page as a standalone class. The classes will serve as a repository for the web UI elements. This design pattern is very popular among testing automation developers. It can also be used in any kind of a language or framework such as Python plus PyTest, Java and TestNG and much more. In POM, each page represents a web page within the application under test. The test uses the methods of this page class whenever there is a need to interact with the application UI. Let's look at an example from one of our previous videos which dealt with Gmail sign-in. I will link the complete video about the Gmail sign-in and the page object model in the description down below. So let's say that we have several pages in the login page. We want to log in to Gmail. First, we will have the Gmail welcome page, which asks us to sign up or to log in and we have some other actions here as well. The other page that we have is the sign up page and in the sign up page we have several actions. We have all the locators, uh, we have the insert username, choose password, users form and other actions. All of these are divided between actions that we are performing on the page itself and also on locators which are the resources of this page. For instance, we need to locate the ID that represents our username insertion field. Another page can be the login page. And here we have the username, next button, password field, and etc. Then we will have the inbox page which is the successful login page and here we have the messages, the menu items and some other buttons and functions as well. So we have all these pages they might be a uh, standalone pages yes and by using this type of architecture we can build easily a project and we can do it systematically. We can just go to the Gmail welcome page, we can map all the locators, we can write the method that we think that might be useful, we can add some more later on and for other pages we can do the same. This gives us the flexibility that we can combine several tests by using several pages. Let's say that I want to have an end-to-end -end test that will start navigating to the welcome page, then signing up and then performing the correct login and then checking the inbox page after a successful login. This is an example of a very complex test that I can use easily all of the actions and the locators that I defined in each of the pages. Sometimes in page object model we also want to include a class called base page. What I like to include in this class is some, let's say that each test or every time I initialize a web page, I want to create a new instance of a web browser. So it could be the place to do it. Another example can be to close the web browser or to write to the report or to write to the logger or to initialize something like init element. By the way, the init element is in the domain of the page factory. I will also link the video to the page factory in the description down below, but let's talk about it in a second. We can use a bit more complex variation of page object model, which is called page factory, that instead of just defining the locators that we defined in those uh, pages, we can define the element by using the find by annotation. And then after we init all these elements by using the constructor, we can do it in the base page, all of these elements would be already ready for usage. 
This can cause other problems as well, but it can be also very useful because we have the elements ready, we don't need to initialize them, everything will happen in the background, and then we can start using those elements and interact with the web pages. There are also other implications of that, such as the Ajax lazy loader, which gives us the flexibility to initialize elements, even though those elements don't appear yet on the screen. As I said in the beginning, this design pattern is mainly used in Selenium because it really tailor made to use in web pages testing. That's all for today. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Please share your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have any suggestion or idea for future videos, please contact us and we will try our best to complete your request. And if you like our channel so far, please consider subscribing. Thank you and have a good day.